And we're back with the conversation this morning. We'll have a legal practitioner join us this morning in Lagos uh, via Zoom, Agio De uh, Stephen, to be precise. Uh, in no time, we're having joined the conversation, but just a bit to the background of what we're about to talk about is that the Nigerian government has accused a major opposition leader of treason. Now, weeks after the candidate of the ruling party won a hotly contested presidential election, the government spokesperson Lai Mohammed gave a government's position during an engagement with journalists in Washington, D.C., that's in the United States. According to the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed accused the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, of inciting people to violence over the outcome of the presidential election, saying it's treasonable. Now, during the respective interactions with international media organization, the minister said that it was wrong for OB on the one uh, breath to seek redress in court, and the other hand uh, of the outcome of the polls, actually, and the other hand also to incite people to violence. OB and his vice, Dati Ahmed, cannot be threatening Nigerians that if uh, the president-elect Bola Amatunibu of the All Progressive Congress is sworn in on May the 29th, it will be the end of democracy in Nigeria. Uh, you know, the conversation is un endless. Uh, the thoughts are still there, but this is a point where we have our guests join us. Let's make sense of all of this back and forth. The fact that there also reeks the standard chance of being, you know, they probably might be arrested. It, it seemed like they're enemy of the state. Uh, Stephen Agio Day, thank you once again for joining us. Good morning, my pleasure. So, um, quickly, I I'd like to ask you, what exactly is a treason according to the Constitution and to other laws uh, in our polity? What exactly is a treason? Treason means a series of acts where you, by force, want to overthrow a, a well-constituted government. So, it's, a, it's, it's very simple. That means by some act or some uh, some definite deed, we are trying to overthrow the government of a country. That's what it simply means in, in layman terms. Mm, so, but, but do you think that you know the actions or the accusation of the federal government in response to? Uh, I mean, if you look at that, juxtaposing that with your definition of a treason according mm -hmm. to the laws of the land, do you think that mm -hmm. it's uh, a treason? No, uh, what um, Alaji Dati Mohammed has said is, is wrong and it is condemnable. If you contest an election and uh, you are in court over it, uh, you should not be declaring the end of democracy. That is wrong. But at the same time, uh, I don't think it rises to the level of treason. And I think actually it's irresponsible for anyone to actually even be talking about treason at this time. Uh, it, it, it may be wrong for him to say that, but uh, one must place it in the context of what is going on in our polity right now. Um, someone has won there in court. What I would have thought is that the spokesman for the for the winner at this time should be engaged in coming ups rather than exacerbating situations. One can see that when we lose something, at least um, they say baby that uh, that uh, you haven't fed or you cry. Uh, naturally, they lost an election, they will cry. But uh, one should not uh, extend that crying and then turn it into another thing and say it is a uh, treason. Uh, um, one can condemn what they have said and say it is wrong. That's on one hand, but to extend it to treason, you know, I think it's still within the bounds of free, free speech, even though it is wrong and condemnable. That's my own view. Well, so, so then look, looking at that, uh, if you say that that's condemnable, just again, uh, the, the thought when Dati Ahmed, this is not that I'm holding brief, for you know the Labour presidential candidate, but we're just looking at the issue when we juxtapose it with what the law and the constitution says. You have someone who's trying to overthrow a government. Mm -hmm. For you to say that uh, the president elect should not be sworn in because the election was not uh, free, fair, and credible, uh, does that really, really, really 
align with the definition of treason when you say you're trying to overthrow government? Is there any way in the statement that was made that sounds like, you know, there's a plan to overthrow the government, whether by that particular statement or the actions? Again, uh, you are, uh, you know, a man of the law, and so uh, I'd like you to bring us up to speed critically. Like I said, um, what he has said, if you have to take the text of what he said carefully. If you take everything he has said carefully, it does not amount to treason. It's still within the bounds of free speech. If you take every single word of what he said, that democracy will end. That is his opinion, that democracy will end. He didn't say there should be a coup. No, he didn't go there. He just said you will be doing something illegal and unconstitutional. That is his opinion, even though it's wrong. You may say that if someone is contesting for that high level of office, he assumes the status of a statesman. So he should, he should watch what he says. And I would agree completely that he should watch what he says. But is what he has said out really outside the bounds of free speech? Has it gone to the extent of what what uh, what uh, treasonable act has he done really? What? really what re unconstitutional act has he done he has said something that he shouldn't have said but it's still broadly within the range of free speech uh, it, it may be irresponsible to expect a statement to be talking like this but that does not mean it's treason and i i think that those who are talking treason should be well guided should be well guided because before you know it you are going into the realm of authoritarianism where you are you are it, it's like someone is hot don't cry no 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 you don't do that you are going beyond the bounds of you yourself are going beyond the bounds of democracy when you do that there should be a certain latitude for speech in a democracy mm -hmm. so wrong speech that is my point so but then again uh, with what the government has said there's also been a response from the side of the labor party saying that they have never in any way incited anyone or tried to overthrow uh, the constitutional government. But then again, do you see this government moving ahead to um, swing into action in, in that light, declaring them an enemy of a state, making arrests and what have you? If they do that, it will be a very bad omen. And it will be taking us back rather than forward. What one would expect of the government now uh, and um, people of goodwill is to say to the Labour Party vice president that uh, he should temper things down for now. He's a statesman at this point. He should temper things down and face the court action which they have instituted and let that play its course. Uh, he's in court already. He may win. He may lose. We don't know yet. He should face the court action. He can even express opinions about the court where he is, so long as uh, he doesn't enter into the uh, range of prejudging the court's action. It, we should allow a lot of latitude for free speech. He can, he can talk. But as a statesman, should he be uh, talking about the end of democracy? No. Um, but to speak of arrest, then you, really you are entering, in my view, into the range of fascism. You are entering into the range of fascism, into the range of authoritarianism. You almost allow democracy to have full amplitude and plenitude. You must, you, you must allow it to, to, to stay large. You must give every room for people to speak, to say what they want and all that. These people are great. They lost an election. You let them speak. But uh, um, the uh, vice president of the uh, vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party is a statesman and he should, uh, he should not heat up the polity. But this I, is what men of good will should tell you. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's also a statement for, from a very noble Nigerian, Wale Shoinka who's yes. in his response yes. to all of the back and forth that's going on with the Labour Party and what have you. He's described them. He's, he said that they were obedient uh, fascist. And, and people believe that, you know, Wole Shoenka calling the obedient fascist is part of the plan. 
that this this is politically motivated. There's an agenda to demarket, you know, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party uh, by the ruling government. Do you agree with this? No, because uh, I'm, admir I'm an admirer of Polish Uh um, Stephen, we can barely hear I'm you. Um, if you if you can project a bit, we can barely hear you. We're struggling to hear you at this point in time. No. Can you hear me now? Now, this is better. Okay. I say I am an admirer of Wale Shoyinka. I don't think he's part of any government agenda. I think that he has a... Uh, well, I, I don't uh, see anything wrong in him saying that... Um, Mr. Dati's statement uh, borders on fascism because um, when you are saying that uh, because whilst you are in court, because you have not had your way, uh, therefore democracy is ending, uh, you are having a tunnel vision view of, uh, of politics. Uh, I think the Labour Party people should realize that in politics you can win or lose. It's like football. You can either win or lose. And But I don't think well, we should understand what Wale Shoyinka is saying. Wale Shoyinka is probably saying that he should be careful what he says. That his statements are fascist. But at the same time, I find fault with uh, the learned uh, professor. Because the learned professor has not made any comments about the, some of the things that happened. In the, I grant that he says he was not around during the election, but he has not made any statement about the things that happened during the election, where, uh, particularly in Lagos State, where people are saying that uh, Igbos were about to drive Europe. The, ethnic, the kind of dirty ethnic politics that was, was played, one would have expected by now that Professor Wole Shoinka would make a comment on that. Not only in Lagos, the uh, kind of violence and the uh, ethnicity that was exhibited nationwide. I know he made a general statement of, of that, but he needs to condemn those ones specifically too. As he says that what uh, Alaji Dati has said is fascist. But uh, that was what has said should not be a license for anyone to now say that uh, he wants to ground a, a, a charge of treason on that. I'm sure Wale Shoyinka himself, who has faced this kind of matters before, will not intend that. I, and there was nowhere in the interview that uh, Shoyinka has granted where he said that uh, Alaji Dati should be arrested or Obi should be arrested. He didn't say that. Uh, I think he even had some complimentary things to say about the... Uh, obedient movement uh, about the emergence of Obi as a credible candidate. I think he had some he did not if you listen to him carefully say that what Alaji Dati has said amounts to treason. He didn't say that. And, uh, and I don't think anyone should stretch it to that and think that is part of any agenda. Personally, I don't think it's part of any agenda. No, but, uh, um, I mean, it, it's not that he, it was said that he said that, but, you know, the description that he has mm. given over time, he said, that, you know, it's a sort, sort of very narcissist, uh, fascism or fascist uh, description that he's given. And he's greeted yeah, a lot yeah. of condemnation from uh, several Nigerians. But again, I, I like yeah. us to understand this, uh, because what you have the Labour Party doing is what... Uh, if it was like every other politi politician does every other time, we will not accept, we will not concede defeat, we, we, we're going to challenge the process, we don't think he was elected, yeah. he shouldn't be sworn in. These are the statements, because also vividly, uh, we remember the time where President Muhammad Buhari himself had rejected results from 2003, Elections, he yes, rejected yes. results from 2007, rejected results yeah, exactly. from 2011. How come yeah, exactly. he wasn't tagged as, you know, all of the rejection of results, saying, I don't accept it, uh, all of that. How come he wasn't, that, that particular act was not described as, you know, 
uh, a treason. Because if someone says you have committed a treason, it, it's huge. You have been declared an enemy of state, and it's well, not something that the international community or you know the home community as well would want to deal with. So again, uh, what sort of conversation is this? And should the government not also be held accountable for making such statement? Uh, how do we classify it? Is this hate speech? Is this propaganda? Where exactly does this lie? Yes. No, if you listen carefully to Wale Shoinka's interviews, he did say that uh, he felt that all the spokesmen for all the parties, all the spokesmen for all the parties should be sent to Ukraine. For the time that they should be sent to Ukraine, uh, he said it as a joke, that they should be sent to Ukraine because they were heating up the polity. He said he also felt that the spokesman of the uh, winner of the election should should uh, should go somewhere because you see they are the ones eating up the polity. You, if you notice, President Buhari has not spoken. If you notice too, uh, um, the major candidate, the presidential candidate of the APC, who who is the declared winner, has not spoken himself. What you are hearing about treason and all that are from. Uh, ministers maybe from party apparatchiks and all that but you are not hearing from the president of the country you are not hearing from the responsible minister for national security of defense so um you see so i just see you have a group of people hitting up the policy and i think boleshu inka rightly said uh, in his interviews that uh, we should take care to deport these people to Ukraine. It used to be Afghanistan, but okay, now it's Ukraine. Maybe they should go and experience what war means so that they can know uh, how, to, uh, how to be circumspect about uh, making statements that lead to uh, disorder. Mm. So, but, uh, mm. you know, in all of this, what big lessons do you think that we can take home again uh, after the election 2023, there's still an aftermath, and that's what we're talking about. Uh, different parties are aggrieved. They have approached the court. And then this cycle continues over and over again. What lessons can we mm. learn? What exactly can we do differently in uh, another election cycle? Well, I take it one by one. For the Labour Party, they came third. They are a new... Polit they are a new political force in Nigeria. Uh, they achieved a lot. They won where they were not expected to win. And I think they should take away some, some level of satisfaction from their performance. We shouldn't wash away the baby with the bad water. I know maybe they expected to win, but uh, I think they have done well. I think they have done well. Um, they, if you look back in our history too, you see uh, Chief Awolowo contested many times and he never won. Buhari too contested many times and he never won. Um, uh, maybe it is immaturity that is playing through at this point. Uh, maybe the candidates of the LP were more experienced. They will temper it down. If you don't win this time, you can win another time. That's democracy. It's like a football game. You know, sometimes you lose when you should win. Sometimes you win when you should lose. This is uh, democracy. I think uh, they should go to a court if they want. That's their right. But uh, whatever plays out there, I think they should accept it and move on as, and build a stronger movement. That's the point. As for the uh, APC, uh, they are the declared winners. I think uh, um, in victory, uh, one should be gallant. Uh -huh. They have won an election. They are there. It's, it's not... Uh, if you... If, they used to say that uh, you shouldn't throw uh, st uh, stones at every passing dog. Uh, people will make comments and all that, but then they, it's not for them to throw stones. I think rather at this point, being the prospective leaders of the country, they should show uh, more maturity. Um, well, as for the, well, the PDP, uh, they have not... Uh, featured in this controversy, so let's leave them alone. But as for the people of Nigeria, my message is uh, democracy is important, and the defense of democracy is important. Um, the defense of free speech is important. Uh, whenever free speech like this is being challenged, and you hear things like, oh, 
we are going to uh, people banding things like treason about and all that. You need people to come out and say, no, this is wrong. Don't go that far. Particularly as there are no acts to support it. Uh, mere statements do not amount to treason. And even if you look at the statement, you won't say anything treasonable. So you, I expect Nigerians to come out and say, no, don't go that way. So that, Because sometimes if you don't talk, um, you will find a situation where uh, actually uh, things may begin to happen that uh, perhaps the authorities might feel, ah, if, if people are not talking, this is what they want. So people need to talk and say, no, 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 let's not, let's not uh, throw the polity into confusion. We can caution ourselves and move on. Politics is a game. That's how I see it. Uh, free speech is very important. What he has said may be wrong, but you can, you can make, you are entitled to say wrong things when you are, when you are exercising your right of free speech. And so the other part yeah. of the question is, uh, what exactly do you think that we need to do in, in the next election circle? I mean, we're looking well, at all stakeholders involved well, yes. now. Th th yes. Thank you for drawing my attention to it. It's INEC, INEC and INEC again. INEC was uh, a major disappointment in this election. They made promises that they couldn't live up to. Uh, they said that the IREF will be instant. It wasn't instant and all that. INEC needs to go back to the drawing board. Their performance in this election cycle was shambolic, if we are to be honest. And the leaders, the leaders, the current leaders should acknowledge that as a matter of urgency. When Yadwa came to power, even though he won election, he acknowledged there were problems with the process that brought him there, and he set up a committee. This is the way of good leadership. There have been there were problems with this election. We shouldn't sweep it under the carpet under under the guys that oh, our party won. No, 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 no. They should go back to the drawing board. I next should go back to the drawing board and look at what went wrong and correct it. The federal government itself should acknowledge that there were problems with these elections and try to find a solution. I know we are hurtling down to census now, to another program, but you see, you don't keep hurtling from one problem to the other without solving uh, one. I think that the uh, what happened in this election should be the subject of some seminars and discussions within government to improve on... Uh, obviously, the... The template that uh, INEC set out for this election didn't work out as planned. That is clear. So they should think of, of uh, reworking it and improving their performance for future elections. That is my opinion. They should think of reworking their performance for future elections. This election has not lived up to it. This, it their performance in this election has not lived up to the belief, the truth be told. And government should acknowledge it. Mm. There's no shame in acknowledging the truth. All right, then, Stephen Aguilde, we have to let it go at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the show. It's my pleasure. All right, then we have been speaking with a legal practitioner right here in Lagos. He joined us via Zoom, uh, looking at what a treasonable offense is or if, you know, the actions of the Labour Party utterances has been made. Not to say that, you know, statements have not been made, but is that tantamount to uh, a treason? At what point do you say that an individual or group of persons have committed you know, a treasonable offence. Uh, th that's the size of it this morning. We take a breather. When we return, we'll be looking at our second conversation. The federal government, the government itself, uh, swing into action already as they have decided to say, hey, we are taking 800 million naira loan just to cushion the effects of the subsidy removal, uh, you know, after six months in 2023. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>